Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice, we're going to mandate you. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Steve Trevino or Trevino. I don't know how we want to pronounce it. In studios, got live dates all over the place. You can go to Steve, T R E V I N O dot com for all the live dates. Got a podcast I'll tell you about as well. Good to see you, Steve. What's up, man? It's very official here. Mm. You know, the notepad, you get a pen, they give you a notepad, a paper clip. I got a paper yeah. clip. Don't well, use it, though. Those are very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, uh, yeah. That's uh, in, case, in case we need to give a midget an abortion. Yeah. Coat hanger just, for the full sizers, really paper clip there. for the That's little right. people. Because they're so little. They're so, <laughs> Brad Williams they're so is here. little. Yeah. Brad here? Williams yeah. is so short, he once yeah. gave his girlfriend Can't an say abortion midget anymore. with a paper clip. Can't say midget anymore. Can't oh, say right. midget. Unacceptable. Uh, little person, much worse than midget. You know, I, one of a, a he's he's passed now. Eric Meyer, hilarious comedian, one of my favorite jokes. He goes, "Why? He goes, Why do they want to be something little?" Yeah, I don't. He goes, "Wouldn't it be better if they were giant babies?" Yeah, and I go, "That's the funniest shit I've ever heard." Well, in in the in the pantheon of changing the language, as as I've always said, saying server is worse than waiter. Server sounds like servant. It's like right. close to like like you could order nachos and ask them to wash your feet. Right. That's that's what server stands. Uh, and then little person it's, is much worse than midget or dwarf. And then the the one that's most confusing is uh, if you say colored person, you're out of a job. But you can say people of color. Then that's okay. Right. So and as, in the seventies, Asians were Orientals. Right. And now it's a rug. Right, but to to me, the colored person versus people of color is like saying you can't say I'm a Raiders fan, but you can't say I'm a fan of the Raiders. But it's the, so it's separate. the exact same thing. And all it shows, and this is my true belief, since there is no difference between colored person and people of color, all they're trying to do is trip Whitey up. Into Constantly. fucking up, and then they can attack. How do we get his ass? Right, right. right. Like, you can't do master bedroom anymore? Right. That's right. not in the home listing anymore? Right. It, and I don't know what they call it now. Right. But it's not master bedroom. Um, they call it the primary suite. Primary. <laughs> yeah, the it's primary. primary suite. The what, what primary. I, all, I, all I'm saying. Well, we are now walking into the primary suite. <laughs> there is, uh, so it's, it's, it's the circle talkers, I call it. It's the circle talkers. I was talking yesterday. So there's a whole new group of people that just want to talk about talking. Yes. And they, I, I want to like fucking build bridges and, and remodel airports and pop up new schools. Yes. And I, I'm all about. I, I, I flew into Burbank and yes. their lack of fucks is oh, unbelievable. Burbank, <laughs> that airport is the exact same architecture as North Hollywood High, my high I mean, school. Carpet, it's just a box with, okay. with carpet that's 80 years old. And they just go, yeah, we go to Vegas. That's what we do. Right. Uh, you, you, Nothing you, to see here. You people are, are garbage anymore. No. Go hey, to- we got a Guy Fieri <laughs> sandwich kiosk. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I like about the Burbank Airport <laughs> is there is that cop battery-powered trike Thing. Oh, segway the, thing. Yeah. The segway yeah, thing. The segway thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the Paul Blart, right. whatever. It's the three. It's for the fat cop. And he rolls. Seg- segway is too much for the fat cop. This yeah. is the trike. <laughs> he needs, this is training tri- wheels. It's the yeah. cop version of the Lark scooter that's at Disneyland for the fat yeah. people, <laughs> right? With the, with the extra wheel. The entire the terminal wheel. is 85 feet <laughs> long. Where are you going on this thing that I'm sure... Three-point c- turn to get yeah, out, yeah, to yeah. turn around. To get 20, <laughs> you'd be much better on foot <laughs> right. than you would on this device, which I've never yeah. seen anyone on. It's just, it's parked in hey, the man, side. Why that Segway got to be white, bro? It definitely cost... Forty-one thousand dollars from the taxpayers, the the, the good to give, citizens of Burbank. To give Fat Boy I had to give Fat Boy a scooter, and it's never used. It sits in the corner. I guess people trip over it every once in a while. 
And all I do is look at it and go, this is the biggest fucking waste in the world. And if there was ever an airport, you didn't need this. It is <laughs> this one. one. There's no second story. You can walk to the other side in three minutes. If you stop at the Guy Fieri kiosk, it'll take eight minutes. Because, you know, in real airports, they have, like, the golf carts. Right. I, I just envision Fat Boy Cop picking up some old lady and putting her on his little trike. On the let me take yeah. Let me take you two <laughs> terminals over. As help a, you out. as a because you're concierge key. As a cop, you grew up watching T.J. Hooker. Every cop show I saw was some guy yelling into a squawk box, no time for backup, and then sliding over somebody's hood <laughs> and chasing down a perk, perp, chasing the guy down out, take his baton out, throw it at his feet, and trip him up. 100% batting average. We're throwing batons at people's, at people's feet, feet, knocking yep. them over, which I don't think would work. But as a cop, you grew up yep. watching that shit, and now someone gives you your three wheeled fat guy <laughs> fat cycle. Scooter. You got to take a look in the mirror. At well, that because point. you know the standards now, right? You can't tell a cop to be in shape. No, you know now. Now you're going to hurt his feelings, and you know, wow, well, you, you, you know my solution yeah. for that. I got a solution. You get one bulletproof vest issued to you when you leave the academy and it, at, this a, is at this 171 size. pounds, this is the size. and this is what you got. <laughs> yeah. Now, you can spill as much of your fat ass outside of that bulletproof vest as you want. That'll be your you business. You want protection? Yeah. That's the size. You're going to get Just shot. Just looks like a sports brawl on some fat yeah. ass. You'll get <laughs> shot in the gun. <laughs> so, uh, I was uh, thinking about you. I was watching your special last night. And uh, I, I know you're the you're the wife whisperer. You know how to talk to women. Well, <laughs> I, I I don't know if that's the case, but yeah, you don't think so. I don't know. You've I, lost your edge. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, my my whole life is is my wife and my kids, and and it's funny because sometimes I get hit up all the time where they go, "Can you talk about something else?" And I'm like, I don't do anything else. Mm -hmm. I I wake up every day. I try to be the best dad I can be, the best husband I can be. And then I go on the road on the weekends. Right. So the things I have to talk about are my frustration with my wife, raising kids, and and I'm a family man. So, you know, and it's like, are you going to tell Chappelle not to be racy? Right. You know, are you going to tell, uh, yeah. you know, Bill Burr not to complain? It's I what mean, you know, it's, right? it's what I do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is funny when people tell you not to complain. I'm always like, that's all I do. That's, that's how I, I get paid. That's how I became a comedian. <laughs> and I don't even think they think. It's like when guys bust each other's balls, women Which, think it's mean. When, and, it's, and they're, they're like, that's how we communicate. And, and it's a shame because the ball busting has gone away. Yes. You know, and, and it's gotten to the point. I, I take these young comics on the road and we like to ball bust on the road. And God, God forbid. I mean, you see these. Com you're, I go, you're a comic. I right. hurt your feelings. I uh, that you don't have feelings. No, we are not allowed to have feelings as comics. Like you, what? No, I. You know, and, my, and then you go to the era of my dad. My dad's Vietnam vet. He has his little Vietnam vet coffee group at at the McDonald's in Portland, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I go and meet those guys from time to time. And the filth and the aggression that comes out of their mouth with their shit talking, yeah, is a whole nother level. That I'm like, you guys don't even know. The way these guys shit talked. Not only, and uh, Chris has a clip from Oprah and Cindy Crawford, not only are we not allowed to talk shit in real time anymore, we now can go back and pull archival footage from the 80s of people talking shit and try to fuck them up for shit they did 35, well, think, years, 35 ago. years ago. They weren't talking. They may have not even been talking shit back then. It just now it feels like they're talking shit. I mean, I feel That's like, right. That's I feel like I'm we've saying. gone backwards. Right. I mean, if, if you watch Don Rickles' uh, SNL monologue, for, first of all, hilarious. Second of all, he'd be annihilated today. I mean, he walks out there, oh, we got an Asian over here. We got a Puerto Rican over here. That Puerto Rican's probably going to stab you. And right. I mean, it's freaking hilarious. And how do we go from that to, oh, my God, don't say anything to anybody. I don't I don't know. It's backwards. It's the right. opposite of being a comedian. Right. And comedians should have pushed back against this harder when it started, is my 
my belief. And it's also weird that there's woke comedians out there. Like, That's isn't what that the opposite me. of being a comedian? And, and not to mention these comedy clubs that are like, you know, getting into politics and putting things on their marquees where I'm going, no, 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 you are Switzerland. Right. The, the <laughs> comedy club needs to be a place where they go, this is art. And we don't know what's going to happen on this stage. And if you don't like it, you can get up and walk out. But do you notice the difference? I definitely do. When you go to Appleton, Wisconsin, it is much different than doing the Laugh Factory or the Improv in L.A. The L.A. audience, I just did a set at the Improv and I told all my horrible, horrible <laughs> jokes. And they're so fucking uptight. Like, they're they're just uptight. And and I'm, I'm sure... If you went to L.A. or you went to, I don't know, Seattle or Portland, like whatever the more uptight cities are, the the less they would react to these jokes. And then when you go to other places, you go to the middle, you go to the middle of the country and they don't give a shit. I know <laughs> they and they're just laughing, having a good time. You know, we are their entertainment because they're the people that actually go to work every day. You mm -hmm. know, I, I remember, you know, with my dad complaining about traffic one day and my dad goes, don't complain about traffic. He goes, these people pay to see you. Mm hmm. These people. Oh, wait, you're complaining about traffic? I was complaining about all the traffic, and he goes, see these people. Oh, I thought you mean you're nine and with your dad well, well, stuck no, in no, traffic. No, dad and I are stuck in traffic. I'm complaining about it. He goes, these are the people that go watch you. Right. Oh, goes, oh. Because he goes, these people work their asses off in a corporate bullshit world. They want to come to the comedy club and fucking let loose. Right. And laugh at whatever they want to laugh at because HR is not sitting next to them and their boss isn't on the right. And they get there, and, which is the other reason why comedy clubs are designed to be dark. So that you don't have to see, you don't feel like, well, everybody's watching me laugh. There right. is a, there is a, a an individual, a, a certain person, and, and you, you can, you can tell me, um, and tell me if, if if you just have any thoughts about this because it just it just popped in my head, but it's happened a few times. It's certainly happened. I was doing Kimmel's Club in Vegas a week ago or so, and it's a Vegas thing. I think it's a Vegas tourist thing. There there will be people that just park their ass front and center, just just right first row. These ladies. We're sort of first row. I had one at the Improv on uh, Wednesday night. First row, just like they're like 28-year-old chick, and they literally have their arms folded, <laughs> and they're looking like oh. they, they have a little incredulous look, and their face has a look like they had a shopping cart with two items in it at the Ralph's. They went to go get some cereal, and somebody took it. That's just, It's kind of a... They just, just sort of like a what, and shit face. What the, just what shit is going on? And, and I'm like, you need to sit further back. If that if your thing is arms crossed, someone put a plate of shit under your nose. Yeah. Fucking move yeah. or something. I can't see you just sitting there judging, looking. Just judging. I would rather you get pissed oh. off and leave. I would rather you oh. heckle. I would rather you just go thumbs down or go, <laughs> oh, come on. Or, Garbage. Uh, I have a cousin with cerebral palsy. That's not funny. Like I, anything then just, motionless, oh. arms folded, shit, just a, not even a, not, not a full blown frown or head shake, Adam, just a look of like, what dude, the fuck feel, are you doing? I feel even worse for the husband. <laughs> For the poor bastard oh, yes. husband that's there trying to have a good time, mm -hmm. and he's got cunty McStink face over here, <laughs> yes, just looking at him like, "Why are you laughing?" I, and then he can't laugh because I, I, she's going to be yeah. a bitch to my, him later. But, but here's Smith. my thing: what is attractive about the first row to this person? You know what I mean? Because yeah, what makes her think? Once you go back two and a half rows, I can't see you anymore. You're in the shadows at that point, but I can see you clearly because your knees are against the stage and it's, you just fold it on, like literally just folding your arms. You know what I mean? Like what, what if somebody said, I'm going to deliver a stirring eulogy for your grandfather and you're like, all right, let me fold my arms but and let me open my mouth right. and raise one brow a little higher. Like <laughs> whether you're at church, whether you're anywhere, at, any, wherever you are, Understand your posture and like the body oh. language and like your face. Like people are reading it, but they're the kind of people that wake up every day and go, "I'm going to hate everything." 
I can't, I can't wait. I can't why, wait to why, shit on things. Why are you at the I comedy club? Why the comedy club? But they find them, and then why the front row? I, what makes you think, you know, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to hate it, so I'm going to sit in the front row. Well, fuck off. It, Go somewhere else. It, I get it all the time. It's, it's, I, it's, it's like, I hate polar bears, so I'm going to the zoo, <laughs> and I'm going to put my nose against the glass of the polar bear cage. Like, you don't right like there. this thing. I'm going to be, be right here. there. Right. They're going to see my face, my <laughs> disgust. Oh, my I'm going to let Adam Carolla know that I am disgusted, and I want everybody but to see the, it. The thing that's weird about these people is, you know, you make some political jokes. All right, maybe they disagree. Or you make some off-color remark. All right, maybe they disagree. And then there's other jokes that are just jokes. They're still right. not budging. You know, they're not budging. And you, It's one hour of watching this person. Like, it's... That's and why even, are they uncomfortable? That's what's even crazier is that they sit there the whole show, and then at the end go, I did not like that guy. <laughs> the f- you sat there the whole... Yes. Ten minutes in, you should make the decision, this guy's not for me, right? right? I, I'm going to go do something else. I had an elderly couple get up and leave <laughs> one of Kimmel's club shows. In Vegas. <laughs> Last week, in Vegas, just got up from, They must have been out. sitting near the front then if you saw them get up he, and leave. He was about four rows back, but he had crazy frames on his eyeglasses. And uh, I made a comment about him being old at some point and he just got up and walked oh. out and it wasn't it wasn't even a it he, wasn't a it, joke this I, I, asshole stated extent. the obvious <laughs> well i'm no, getting the fuck out of here i was talking about <laughs> progeria the disease i was doing this what progeria joke progeria <laughs> <laughs> hey it's a heady set yeah. it's a heady set you know, I'm not up there yelling it. "get her done" 25 times in a row. I bring the comedy. You know, when you write, when you sit down to write a bit, and you go, you know, I was. It's 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 actually somebody else's joke. It's the only joke I do that's not my joke, but it's the progeria joke. And I do it once in a while. And progeria is a disease where I, the I don't. It's oh. you look. Old when you're nine years old. When you're nine <laughs> like, years old, like you look Benjamin like Benjamin Button. Thing. Yeah, you look like you're eighty. All the little old men. You look like you're eighty when you're They're nine years on old. Always Sally, Jesse, Raphael. Yes, yes, like back in the day. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. All right. Okay. See, everyone kind of knows it once you explain it. And so there's this old guy, and and people are like, "What is progeria?" And I said, "It's like if this guy was nine years old. That's what the disease is. <laughs> that's enough. Fuck this shit. But he was 74. You know what I mean? I'm not saying. You know, he could have been nine. He might be here for Jerry. He's like, I just he came here to drink. Nine. He's like, you motherfucker. I have progeria, you piece of shit. Oh. I snuck in the club. I'm taking oh. my bomb pop and my Pez dispenser and oh. leaving. Oh. That was yeah, that guy f- just got up and left. Yeah. But I'm okay with, I, I always tell, I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay with somebody not liking my set. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if, you, if you don't like what I do, man, like, I, it's always funny for me because I talk about my wife and my frustrations, and I'll have that Karen. Mm-hmm. And then inevitably afterwards, she'll come up to me and go, you know, the way you talk about women. And immediately I'll go, are you married? Divorced. I'm like, bitch, this conversation's over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are the problem. The other, the other thing is, is people feel deputized to be able to say anything to anybody. When I was Keyboard young, cowboy. I would never dream in a million years to go to a comedian and talk to him about his set or his right. business. I wouldn't have been in the realm of possibilities. It wouldn't have been in the realm of possibilities when I was a kid to go up and yeah, talk to somebody's dad. Like I had right. one of my it's, daughter's friends was like, a year ago, she was like buzzing around the barbecue in the back of the house, like like an outdoor kitchen, like barbecue. She was like standing. And I walked out and she, she was there, and I'm like, hmm, what's, "What are you doing there?" And she's like, "I ah, just doing something." And like an hour later, I headed out again. She was standing out there again, and I figured she was copping a cigarette or drinking a Jaeger shot or something. And I was like, "Hey, what what business do you have out here in this <laughs> barbecue? Here it's night. Like, what are you doing?" She's like, "Oh, nothing." And she just like went back in the house. Ten minutes later, I got my daughter coming in. Hey, what was that about? I'm like, what, you, what was what about? The, you and my, my friend, we were talking to her in that, that voice. I was like, she was hanging out in the shadows, like by yeah. the barbecue a couple times. I want to know what, what she was doing out there. Well, you don't, you don't go up and talk to people about 
you you made her feel bad. The point is, is Mike Bodder found out because this person oh, told her. You know what I mean? Right. Could you imagine being at Mister Sh- Jones's house right. when you're a kid and be out fucking around with his barbecue? And he, at some point, he came out, went like, "Hey, man, wh- wh- what's up out here? What are you doing?" And then you go in and find your friend and go, hey, you better go settle your dad's fucking hash before yeah. I do it myself. I'm fucking pop I don't want a fucking third there. degree yeah. while I'm copping right. a cigarette by the barbecue. You better straighten this shit out. Otherwise, I won't come here and eat his fucking food anymore. I'll tell you that yeah, right I don't need now. That bullshit over here. Like yeah, that. I don't need this shit. <laughs> it's like, so that's where the that's where we're at with kids. Not so she. Not only did she feel attacked or uncomfortable, but she was being weird. She's you're, being, you're weird. being weird. Yeah, don't so be fucking you got to know that, right? Like, yeah. you can't just go out into a place where nobody else is, and it's not your house, and hang there for no reason at all. And somebody's just asking why you're there. What's well, going I on? asked why she was there the second yeah. time I saw her hanging yeah, out. It happened there. again. Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Right. She's being what the kids call sus. Yes. Yeah. And she fucking ratted me out. And these <laughs> both of them thought, wow, this old man. The hey, guy who pays the, the mortgage here is way out of line. <laughs> this fucking dick. This fucking dick. How dare he? We better, How dare we better he? nip this, this one in the bud. Yeah. He's going to be asking all kinds of questions. I mean, look, my wife's so good at, at everything. You know, we, we do a lot of remodels at the house, you know. And I, I, I grew up, you know, um, doing construction. I grew up roofing houses. I mean, you, you know, I know a little. You know, I, I, could, I could tell your house mm. and people would go, huh. But they could definitely go, a pro did not do that. Right, it's but fucking you could done, do it. But yeah. I could do it. Mm-hmm. But my wife, we're like, she'll go over there and be like, "Is this supposed to be like this?" And I want it, and I'm, just, I'm looking at her like, "Fucking, this is their lane. They fucking do this every single day. Leave them the fuck alone." <laughs> the Tylers. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is what they do. Yeah. Well, I don't understand why that tile has to look like that. And I'm like, "Well, you want to do the fucking math?" Well, women. Yeah, it, it's, listen, I used to do this for a living. All I dealt with was women. Oh. It's all, you do not deal with the guy. Right. Once in a blue moon, you deal with the guy. Like once in a blue, like when I was doing this, I remember saying like to the guy, like, oh, I'm going to use quarter round instead of base shoe on the molding, on the baseboard molding or something. And he goes, did you ask my wife? And I said, no, no, she's not here, but I just kind of keep moving forward here. That, that, uh, you Make better. Sure. You got to talk to her. You, yeah. you got to talk. Like he's like, I don't want to get into trouble. Yeah. I, I, I don't, don't want to make. I don't want to pay for you to do it again. I don't want to green light something that she's going to come back. So the women were always in charge. Yep. Of everything, and the problem with women is they had an unrealistic sense of like what could be done. Like yeah. when I would paint a room, I'd prime it first. And then when I was done priming it, the woman would walk into the room and is go, "Is this what it's going to look this, like? Are you going to but are you put are you going to paint it?" And I'd go, "Yeah, yeah, we do the prime and then the paint." Okay, so this isn't going to be the color. Uh, no, no, it's you? like you've yeah. got to prime it first, but, but you are going to paint it. <laughs> yes, I'm going to paint it. I, you just walked in after I was done priming right, I, it and you want to know what's going on and it's why like why is it red <laughs> why, well that's for waterproofing honey that's you know let uh, this fucking guy do his job oh red guard yeah, yeah the red guard you know i we, know we, everything we, man we built this beautiful uh, this pa- is a shower paver well no we did a paver patio in my backyard beautiful it was all stonework i mean these fucking dudes from honduras Oh yeah, it's. I mean, they're four foot eleven. Yeah, you know, they're carrying bricks like they're, yeah. they're like ants. They wear, carrying a leaf. They wear dress shoes. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> and they wear don't wear shorts. Yeah. They wear fucking slacks and dress shoes. Like they work because they're, they're going to church. It's one hundred and four <laughs> degrees outside. But so they're building this beautiful freaking. And my wife goes over, and every time she'd walk out there, the defeat on these men. Oh yeah, the, you just see their shoulders drop, mm. and I would be behind her like, like, don't. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. And she'd be like, well, does this, you know, that grout line looks, and I'm like, honey, they're putting rock. Yes. It's fucking rock. (laughs) Yeah. They can't, it's not cut tight. 90 degrees. It's fucking rock. Right. They're making it all fucking, well, but there's a little piece in between. (laughs) And I'm like, who the fuck do you think these people are? The other. uh, I mean, they are like little magic elves. Don't get me wrong. They're like fucking. The other chick thing that'll happen all the time when I used to build is they'll go like, we want, we want to blow out this wall and then we have it wide open between the kitchen and the dining area. And then we just, just wide open expanse. Yeah. And then I'd go, well, it's a supporting wall. You got a second floor <laughs> and we're going to have to put a post in. I don't yeah. want a post. 
I want it wide open. Yeah. And then I'd go. Open concept. I'd go, all right, well, if we're not doing a post, then we got to put a piece of steel up there because right. it's a 22-foot span, and we're not going to be able to get it with a 4 by 8 I need to put a piece of steel. Well, how much is that going to cost? Well, that's going to be five grand. Right. Oh, no, I don't. I don't want that, yeah. I, I, but I want it open. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, all right. You can have a post right. for four hundred bucks, or we can put we can put yeah. a piece of steel up there. I'll we build can a span nice, it with steel. Yeah. I, I know about five thousand dollars. I, I don't want to do that. I put a pretty cedar post. I could put a box around it, but there's right. going to be a fucking post here, or yeah. there'll be a piece of yeah. steel. But you right. need to pay. It's going to be yeah. five grand. Well, no, no, I don't want to pay that. But I want. I want, it, I want open. it open. I want it right. fucking open. That's the mind that you have to deal with. Well, my wife will argue with fucking GPS. Why did you turn there? I'm like, I don't know. Fucking NASA told me to. Yeah, yeah, a satellite. Fucking a satellite that's watching. Yeah. Well, that's not faster. Oh, okay. Well, fucking NASA's wrong. (laughs) NASA's fucking wrong. (laughs) Women do argue with navigation. And then they'll do that thing where they go... I always just go on the 405 and get off on Howard Hughes. I know, I know, but the computer that's talking to the satellite okay. is saying I should get off and exit first because it knows something yeah, that you don't data. know. And or you think there's a personal vendetta? <laughs> they're trying to fuck you. Satellite, fuck you. Satellite's gone rogue. <laughs> fuck the you. Trevinos, man. They, <laughs> they could take seven minutes longer to get to the airport. I'm going to destroy Which them. Which is also retarded about Google where you go... They go, here's another route that is 30 minutes slower. Why the fuck would you show me that? Oh, I'll tell you what I want. I'll tell you what I do want out of Waze. This is what I want. You can, like, let's say where we are right now. Right. You can get from here to LAX. If if you use Waze, you can get from here to LAX, literally get on the freeway 100 feet from here and never get off the freeway until you get to the airport exit. Or there's a version where you'll just be driving through cemeteries and over people's lawns and through the scariest, diciest, gang infested, but fucked up parts of L.A. But you shall sh- you will save 87 seconds I'll and, and, and it. it tells you do it. And my thing is, is I I could dedicate an extra right. two minutes and just stay on the freeway, never have to think about turning, turning here, cutting up there, going around there. Like, But I want you to tell me. Right. I want you to go, look, there's a Mad Max version of this where you will be you will be driving through the this scariest option? places in the world. Fucked up. <laughs> or you can stay on the freeway, and I will add, to, it's going to be two minutes. And probably live. And probably live yeah. to tell. To I, tell. I agree with that. I, why don't they tell you? This one's kind of fucked up. <laughs> but yeah. it yeah. will get you there two minutes. Yes. Yeah. I got so deep. Are you, what? what's your nationality? Mexican. Okay. American, Mexican, American, American, Mexican. I got, Latinx. What, I got, what are we doing I got so deep off of, I went, I went to LAX, took ways from here. I was so far off the grid that I passed a, a business. I've lived in LA my whole life and I've never seen it this before written on the sign above the restaurant it said mexican cuisine and i thought i've boy. never seen cuisine attached to We're mexican fancy now yeah, boy, that's God. what, I, that's what I'm it, you know we go out to mexican but we only do the cuisine <laughs> we don't fuck around with them taquerias we they got one of them cuisines have you and i was driving past it just staring at it going cuisine that's and then f- i thought you got to earn cuisine. Well, that's you know, what I'm saying. Like, you, how you arrogant got... was the guy that started the restaurant? He's like, no, puta. <laughs> my food, my food ain't regular food, bitch. It's cuisine. I would like, it's cuisine. I'd like to be a, the sanctioning body in charge of cuisine. Like, first things first. As a country. There has to be. If you don't have an Air Force or a Navy and you specialize in fentanyl trafficking, <laughs> yeah. no cuisine for you. Yeah, I'm, You're I'm, not, you haven't earned a cuisine. Yeah. I would like to walk into that place and go, <laughs> what do you got? Street tacos. Sorry, no cuisine. No cuisine. You have no cuisine. When every menu item includes a tortilla? No cuisine. <laughs> it's no fucking cuisine. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm beans, sorry. rice. No, yeah. plus we can roll it. We can put half it in half, yeah. make a taco. The, like, the only break up to this menu is you add yeah. eggs in the morning. That's not 
cuisine. Yeah, I happening. need something that rises. I need a souffle. I need something <laughs> that rises. I need like do a you tortilla use a souffle. Torch? Do you use yeah. a torch? Do you use a butane torch to brown <laughs> the brown <laughs> yeah. the top? If not, you're fucking out. Help us. We got one. Well, <laughs> dessert. You got liquefied sugar shaped into a cactus. Yeah. Sorry. Something. That is not cuisine. No, we have a chocolate like a piñata. You hit it with a stick and the candies, they fall out. Uh, not candies. cuisine. That's not, not cuisine. Not Sorry, cuisine. Buddy. Sorry, bud. I'm going to have to go you and are, fix that sign for you. you are, You're smack dab you're, in the middle of food. And, and by the way, <laughs> food. Mexican cuisine number two. Like, yeah. no, you can't have a number <laughs> right. next to a fucking... Like, Mexicans yeah. are the worst at being creative. You serve something called flap steak. It's like you Taqueria do not Jalisco, have it. one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, can it just be Taqueria Jalisco? Do you have to fucking number them? I agree. Why are they fucking numbered? Oh, my favorite part about the Mexican people <laughs> is how on the nose they are with everything. Everything. Like... The there's a butcher that's like a Mexican butcher that's like in Burbank and the front of it painted on the sign is just like Mr. Pig with an axe and he's chasing a cow. Like this is how like we do it. The stuff you don't want to think about. Like we call it pork, not pig. We give it different names because we don't even want to think about the it's animal. A fucking savage you guys thing. not only have the animal, but then you- the animal's got an, an axe and a top hat. And, and like a monocle. Look, you've made it into a person <laughs> now. I have to eat a fucking... person. It's Mr. Pig is going the... after Mrs. Cow with an axe. Got the Monopoly Man fucking oh. hat on and uh, look, looking like I am, Bud Freeman. I am telling you, Ben, look for this place. I, I, and I, it's, it's been there for a million years. I don't know if it's still there. I, it's, it's in Burbank. It's a butcher. But... It's Mexican. And the front of it just has this big mural I mean, I also got. I mean, I I do like the 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 aggre- the, the they're so forward, right? You mm-hmm. go to Mexico, you buy a pack of cigarettes. There is a dude's fucking on the back. It'll show a dude who has lung cancer. Mm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they will mm-hmm. show black lungs. They mm-hmm. Like they're like, look, the news here. Like somebody died today. Mexican news is like, there he is, mira. Right. He lost his head. Look. <laughs> that, right. Like, I mean, they're so forward. I mean, I grew up, you know, my dad is is Vietnam vet, hardcore, loves this country, but, you know, Mexican-American. He, my dad was always just so straightforward. Yeah. So that's how I grew up, and I don't know how to be any, anything else. Right. And nowadays, it, 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 it hinders me. Yeah, uh, listen. Because I don't know how to, like, I, not I be, work. I work construction. All I do is work with Mexicans. Right, right? and they're and, direct. And, and here's how all you need to know about Mexicans. Work with an electrician named Jose. He would bring his son on the jobs, like 13, 14 year old son. You know, they're always teaching him, do. working him. Yep. Right. Kid was chubby. He was called Bodo La Queso. Yeah. This is ball of cheese. Ball of like cheese. That, they yep. would never, if you were fat yep. and you were a teenage boy, your name was fat. Yeah. You were fat. Like, that's what they called, yep. they we just had called a, we, him a ball of cheese. You know, the kids that were born with the like funny arm? Yeah. You know, we, we had one in our neighborhood and his nickname was Right Hook. Right, that like you guys can't even do chupacabra. But, it's like a yeah. goat sucker. My, like my, it's literally just nothing creative, nothing interesting, <laughs> yeah. no finesse, no cuisine. Yeah. Just it's it's a thing. We'll call it the goat sucker. Yeah, it's thirty five hundred calories a plate, and it's filth. Come eat it. Right, it's fucking poor but people. But no food. cuisine. It's poor. You people get no food. cuisine. Yeah, it's all right. You know, what's, a, we a gotta week? find oh, this sorry. place. Yeah. All right, well listen, I've done enough on the Mexicans. I know the culture well. I'm from here. Mm-hmm. You, if you're from here and you work construction, you will know Mexicans at their core. You will eat with them. You will stay with them. You'll find out what they did every weekend. Yep. You'll all the trouble. And every drink, every one of them has seven DUIs. Yep. Like they'll they drink don't 30, have thirty five beers, right? And then wake up in the morning at five a.m. like and nothing sling happened. stucco and like nothing happened. No, yep. uh, fucking animal. dress shoes. Uh, dress shoes and slacks. Like they, they don't have gym shorts. Hey, bet the white shoes. Were, hey, bet the white you were in dress slacks and and and, and shoes. Rayon shirts. Uh, no, plus we're going to the beach later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't have swim trunks either. They're just wearing the wearing Full jeans, jeans the in the ocean. Fuck, the only ones barbecuing. Oh, oh, <laughs> and you know the other the other Mexican move is surf fishing. Oh, yeah. I have passed. 200,000 Mexicans 
surf fishing. Just they're in Malibu. They're standing in the water. They're on the rocks. They're just surfing. Yeah. I've walked past 100,000 of these guys. I always look in their five-gallon bucket. Nothing. Not a, there's nothing. I don't think there's a hook just, on the end of the fucking line. I think they want to just, get away from their fucking old lady. Yep. They live in a shitty apartment in Reseda. There's nine of them in the apartment. And the guy goes, I'm going out and getting dinner. Yeah. And he just leaves. Not and he just stares at the ocean. Not no even hook. A fucking hook. It's, no a, it's a spark plug to get it out it's there. Just a little weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a a foul plug. plug. <laughs> he's got a fouled spark plug <laughs> from the Chevy. <laughs> he throws it. And he's like, I'm going to fucking stand here and not get lectured by this bitch in Spanish. There's some badass white girls walking around. Yeah, I'm going to check out some white ass and some titties. The bucket just has smashed Maddie light cans. I I just, they just stand there. (laughs) They just stand there and look at the line. Any, you can't go. There's never a white guy doing it. No, no. White guy. I've never seen a just, black guy do it. There's no Asians. They won't engage in that no. shit. Only Mexicans in the jeans. Yep. They don't have fucking board shorts. They don't nope. have shorts yeah. or gym trunks or anything. Just standing no cargo there. cargo shorts. Staring just. at a line that's tied to a spark plug that's in eight feet of water, <laughs> and they just stand there. And there's never, you never see a mid action, like, oh boy, no, I never, oh, yeah, you never oh see here the, she comes. Nope. The rod's never that been never over. Moves. There's <laughs> okay. nothing in the bucket. But he does, just he does check there. it every once in a while. Every once in a while, he'll bring it in and look at his spark plug and go, yeah. fuck it, it's going to pass it back <laughs> out. Yeah. I'm not going home yet. Fuck so there's no way these guys are doing it to eat fish. No. That, that's, an, that's an impossibility because I've never seen them, uh. I've never seen them hook up. I've never seen anything in the bucket. There's no I've cast never, net. There, there's, there's nothing. No bait. There's nothing. There's no fucking. They're just they're trying to get away from their old lady. That's exactly. But what I mean. listen, if you lived in an apartment in Reseda with nine people, wouldn't you fucking go down to Malibu and just yeah. bring your spark plug yeah. and your fish? Hey, Juan, rod? Juan, where do you think you're going? I'm, I'm going fish. to the beach. You can't just go to the beach. That's when he goes. You know what? I'm gonna get a fucking fishing pole. Right. Yeah. And she goes, "You're going to the beach to do what?" And he's like, "Bitch, I'm." <laughs> I'm fish. I'm, I'm working dinner. I got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that spark plug and shut the fuck up <laughs> and make me some Mexican cuisine. That's right. <laughs> I want some cuisine when I get home. And by the way, uh, I'm going down to catch dinner, but just in case I don't land a big one, <laughs> yeah. take the machete, go up to the hill, hack some cactus, come back and throw it in a pot. It's shave off the spinas. Oh, are those the red balls? No, the, the spinas spikes, are the little oh, the spikes. spikes. Yeah. My mom, I, I live on 12 acres, and there's fucking cactus everywhere. My my mom still does that. I uh, know. She'll I, be back there cutting. I'm like, Mom, what the what are you doing? Well, yeah. they're good. I go, no, that was filler for you guys. You yeah. now have food. <laughs> it's Mexican tofu. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. But, but it's tofu for vegetarians who wish they had meat. Yes. That's and then she makes what it tea is. out of the red bulb. That's what are those called? Berry cactus berries? That, that's not hibiscus. But that's peyote, no. though, right? That isn't that peyote? Anybody? I don't. I don't know. We got to figure this out. Look, we got the Cindy oh, Crawford sorry. thing. We got everything. Well, yeah. we'll take a quick break. Come back with Steve right after this. Simply safe. Squeezing in one last summer getaway, are we? Well, before you take off, protect your home with the latest innovation from Simply Safe Home Security, twenty four seven live guard protection. Well, it's exactly like what it sounds like. It's, it's uh, they have fast protect monitoring, and Simply Safe's agents can deter intruders right through the smart alarm wireless camera, warning them that they're being recorded and that police are on the way. Voted best home security of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. This stuff is modular it's light it's small you don't have to drill and pull wires you don't have to make a mess and set it up and when you leave you can go to a new house another apartment take it with you and right now my listeners get 20 percent off of any simply safe system when you sign up for fast protect monitoring it's a huge offer it's a limited time you'll get a break on your homeowner's insurance so get safe with simply safe Visit Simply Safe Two Eyes, simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. I said, We can't take my truck, baby, because I love that truck. She was so, and I go, and if you drive it when I fish, because that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fish. And when I fish, you're gonna drive that truck. She goes, What's wrong with that? I said, You have wrecked every vehicle that you've ever driven. And I don't want you to wreck my truck. But because I love my wife, we took my truck. I'm fishing with my dad. I get a text message from my wife, and it reads, hey, no big deal. 
Any man that speaks wife already knows what's about to happen. No big deal. Call me when you're done fishing. Dot, dot, dot. This is how I knew I was fucked. Dot, dot, dot. Have fun. I go, oh, she wrecked my truck. <laughs> she never wants me to have fun. Steve Trevino is on the Adam Carolla Show. Oh, the Mexicans. Oh, buddy, those Mexicans. Aren't they they fucking work, though, man. Oh, God, they work. They, you know, and, and I just, you know, my, my grandfather immigrated here and... and from where? Uh, from Mexico. Well, but like what part? Uh, uh, he was. We, my mom is from Hidalgo, Mexico, which mm-hmm. is uh, Sabinas Hidalgo specifically. And, um, you know, they came here. And I just, you know, when I'm at these comedy clubs, I'm like the only guy that will go into the kitchen to talk to the Mexicans. And they mm-hmm. freak out. <clears throat> you know, because yeah. they're like, what are you doing back here? Right. And I speak Spanish. I'll go there and say hi and just thank them. And I just think, man, you know, that's, what, that's the problem with this country that we're living in is that people don't realize – that the, what the American dream truly is. The American dream is a promise that you can have a job, you can put a roof over your family's head and food in their bellies and the freedom to make your own decisions. That's fucking it. I agree. I Everything I have, else is a bonus. I totally agree. I have no idea what chapter we're in right now and why we're making all these promises that we can't it, it, keep. And it's more circle talk it's more talk of no one's illegal we welcome all immigrants and we're a sanctuary city right bring us your tired and your huddled masses and stuff and then a busload of mexicans show up and they're like what the fuck now what now right. what <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, zero and, and, zero plan and my concern you know for me is is my son my concern is is for the mexican american mm-hmm. you know making sure that my son gets the education uh, that he needs and he deserves. And unfortunately, if if there's 50 kids his age that don't speak English, that were, that were brought here, that now have to get caught up at his school, then my son's education gets pushed, yeah. pushed to the side. I, you know? I agree. And um, I never understand, like, we go nuts. Like, oh, everything's racist or building a wall is racist or whatever it is we're doing at the board. It's all, everything is racist. Every policy is racist. I... I always think about Canada. Canada is super stringent about stuff that you can do. Every time I go into Canada, I get rousted. Oh my god! By, by the border guys, like you get pulled out. Border, it's yeah. hard. It's a pain in the to ass. get into yep. Canada. But I never have thoughts about it. they're not allowed to do this or this is unfair. Right. Or, it's their country. Right. They get to do whatever the fuck they want. I always say thought experiment. If Canada built a wall, would we be? Those All upset about it. Pieces this is of right. shit. Yeah, we just be like, it's their fucking country. They can do whatever they want, and, and I guess they're concerned about people coming and going and them not knowing. Well, and and my big thing too is like, you know, Mexico has all the resources in the world. It's a huge country. Why not? Why not help them create their economy better and make their world better so that they're not pouring into our country, which, by the way, people don't realize that most of them are Honduran. Most of them are from South, South America. They're crossing into Mexico. Mexico's going, ah, fuck you guys. Right. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. You know who will take you? <laughs> or a bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was always, <laughs> that was always my thing with um, AOC and all the other bullshit politicians who would go, like, kids, kids are in cages. Kids in cages. I'm like, this, this chick just walked here from Honduras. Right. She just walked here from Honduras. I think she's doing pretty good with her cot and her three meals a day and her medical she's attention. Resilient. She's yeah. got air conditioning she's in her much fucking better. roof. She was hanging off outside of a bus right. for the last 3,000 miles. I, I think this is a upgrade. Yeah, is nice. I think she needs a break. For I her. She, I think she needs to sit under a bridge just for a little while. Just take a break. Take a load off, honey. You, but yeah. I, it's, it, it, it's crazy, We're man. And, and, and it is sad, and it is, you know, I... My, my my main concern, like I said, is is my son, you know, and, and people like my dad who they asked him to go to Vietnam. He did. He did it with pride. He absolutely loves this country. It is a pain in the fucking ass for my dad to get anything from the VA. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, the poor guy, man. He goes in there. I mean, he's out. He's there for all day to finally get a meeting to hopefully get diagnosed to hope. I mean, and it's like, well, wait a minute. We're letting all these people in here illegally. And we're giving them medical. Can we not take care of my dad? Yeah. Who, who put on a uniform? Who now deals with Agent Orange and all the things that come with Vietnam? I do the country asked them to. I they the, what I'm always thinking about is what is the end game? 
because it feels like the end game is chaos. I I don't I don't feel like there's a plan. Was I talking Was I talking to Doctor Drew about this, or was I talking on this show, Chris, where I was saying like it'd be like saying I'm just going to leave the front door open when I go to bed. Sounds like Drew. I, I think I was talking to yeah. Drew. I'm saying the other day it's be like me saying I'm just leave the front door wide open when I go to bed. Yeah, y'all crash That's out. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just leaving it open. That's my plan. And then I get up. The next morning, there's like raccoons in the right. kitchen sink. And I go, what's going How on? How dare they? What's going on? What's going on? It's like, well, you you left the front door open and you went to bed. And then raccoons came in and now they're in your fucking sink. And you're going, well, I don't, I didn't sign up for this. It's like, you, I, here's what I'm saying. If somebody said to me, I leave the front door open and then I take a raccoon catching cage and I bait it and I put it in the entry hall because I right. want to get those raccoons up again. Okay, that's a plan. Yeah, you have a but plan. If, but yeah. if it's just leave the front door open and go to bed, then all you want is chaos. If it's just this, which is not open border, ship people all over the country, well, drop them off in the middle of Texas, whatever, that's just fucking chaos. Nuts. It's not a plan. Uh, but let me ask you this question, Adam, and, and, and it is, I, I know the answer, but it's like when I lived in L.A., okay, I lived in L.A. for 14 years, went back to Texas, I now live in Texas. Why did I pay a cleaning lady and a nanny in L.A. five times less than I pay in Texas? Oh, really? Why? And the reason is because there's somebody willing to do it for cheaper here. Yes. Right? Because there's another one and another one and another one and another one. I go to Texas. I go, well, I go, wait, cleaning ladies don't cost this. Right. Meanwhile, my cleaning lady in Texas is driving a brand new Tahoe, mm. right? Living a good life, you, you know, getting paid to do right. a job yes, because there's not somebody knocking on my door going, fuck her, I'll do it for cheaper. Now, that's exactly right. You and, know, and yes. When it's just common sense. Well, when you're new and you're poor and you're desperate, then you will work right, for cheap. anything. Right. right. That's so, then, so then you create a permanent underclass yes. and then they work for cheap and then they end up growing up in the ghettos and, then, and it's just a cycle of... Yeah, and really what you do is you bounce out a lot of, like, black people who should be learning construction, learning a right. trade on those job sites. You take them who, who are Americans and who right. need a skill, and you send them home. And that's what we're dealing with. And, uh, and then their labor gets cheaper and right. cheaper. And then people walk around going, can't we get them fair wages? Well, we can't because right. you keep letting more in. Right. There is no supply and demand. There's just supply. Yeah. That's so a very then, good point. You know, and in Texas, where I live, you know, it is it is five times cheaper to live there, yet I pay my cleaning lady and my nanny five times more. That's interesting. I never thought about that. And it's like, well, why? Because there's not somebody. And our nanny is a college student who's going mm. for her master's. Mm -hmm. We pay her well. She loves her job. Mm -hmm. You know, but if there was somebody knocking on the door, unfortunately for our nanny, sorry, honey, it's about right. dollars and cents. Right. You know, I got this Mexican woman who's willing to do it for nothing. Well, speaking of Mexicans, uh, you were saying off the air that you did George Lopez's show, and you that was the last podcast he ever did? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It, it was such a weird thing, too, man. I, You know, I, I am, I, I'm one of these, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I want everybody to succeed. I want people to win. Oh, racist. I, 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 yeah, I think I think that there's room for all of us. Mm. You know, Adam Carolla does what Adam Carolla does. I do what I do. Jimmy Kimmel does what Jimmy Kimmel does. And there's 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 for all of us, right? I'm in there on the podcast, and I just go, man, there's this kid who's really funny. It's, and I named the guy the kid's name, and George just was like, no, you know, you should worry about you and only you. And my thought was completely different. And as a I, comedian, as a comedian, you know, and and I. I I was just trying to give this kid props and, and give him some love. And he was like, don't give that kid love. Like, why are you, why do you want to talk about him? And I was like, well, cause he's really good. He's coming up. He's, I, I saw a couple of his bits on TikTok. What's his name? His name is Ralph Barbosa. All right. Why are you plugging yeah, this kid? Yeah. Why the fuck you're here to talk yeah. about you. Uh, yeah. But, Ralph but, Barbosa. But it was, yeah. it was kind of that thing where I was like, well, I does he just, know him? He doesn't know. George doesn't know him. I was just kind of trying to introduce yeah. George to him. You know, I get it. Um, and as the Mexican American comedy community, I would like to see more um, love and more hey, unity. Unity, you know, and and that's kind of all, my only goal was, hey, you know, I've been in the game a long time. I have specials on the air. George, you're King George, mm -hmm. and here's this young kid who's coming up. We should, 
We should give him some. He's kind of King Jorge, I would uh, say. Yeah, King, yeah. King, King Jorge. Um, and then it just turned into this whole thing, went completely viral. And, and you know, people were like, you know, hating on George. And and, and I, I didn't hate George for that. I, you know, everybody has their own opinions. And everybody can live their life. In my that opinion, was you know? a, it, was, it is a kind of weird posture to have, though. You're just plugging some kid you think is funny. Yeah, it, I mean, it was very weird to me because, you know, I, I do listen to other other comics podcasts. And, and it seems very like, hey, isn't this guy great? Or look at this funny bit that, you know, I was listening to your interview with, with Mikey Winfield and... You're giving him flowers, you know, and you're going, God, this guy's so great. And to me, that's what it should be because, first of all, this business is extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. And it's also extremely difficult if you're Mexican American, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like, hey, man, I'm trying to give this kid some props. And all of a sudden, it turned into this negative thing when it didn't have to be. Confusing. But, yeah, confusing. but a lot of life is confusing to me as I, as I grow older. I'm confused by adults. I, I'm very confused by adults. And, and I will say that as I've grown older, my perspective on life has completely changed, you know. Well, someone my, else who's grown all older, Cindy Crawford, our finally, our oh, Cindy yeah. Crawford Oprah story. She was a victim. A victim? <laughs> by, by Oprah. <laughs> this is on TMZ. Well, last yeah, so night. there's a new Apple TV show coming out called The Supermodels, and Cindy's in it. She's getting interviewed, and she's talking about a uh, appearance she had on the Oprah Winfrey show in 1986. Mm hmm. 86. Yeah. yeah. In 86. Do you it, just want to see the clip from 86? Yeah. Let's just watch the... I don't uh, know who the guy is on this. It's her thing. agent. Oh, it's her agent. Yeah, John Casablanca. Sweet mullet. Oh, so yeah. did you have to groom her? Was she, did she always have this body? <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> Stand up just a moment, because no one saw you come in standing up. Now, this is what I call a body. <laughs> Very good, very good. But I'm not, not, I don't weigh 100 pounds. I'll tell that lady on the phone that I do not weigh 100 pounds. You're what, are you about 5'9", 5'10"? 5'9", and I tried to stay around 120. Okay. So. I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so she's 20 in this clip. Yeah. Cindy. So now in the upcoming Apple TV show, she does a she, talking head talking about this. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she wasn't very fond of what happened. Okay. I was like the chattel or a child, like be seen and not heard. When you look at it through today's eyes, when Oprah's like, stand up and show me your body, like show us why you're worthy of being here. In the moment, I didn't recognize it. Only when I looked back at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that was so not okay, really. Especially from Oprah. Well, look. God, she's still she's, hot. She, she's still yeah, hot. Still she's hot. hot. She still can't talk. So, <laughs> I, I, you're a model. That's what people do. They Be a look, model. They look at, at your you. body. Yeah. Yes, well. that's that's the game you're in. That's how you it, make your like money. It's like a bodybuilder doing a show going, don't look. Don't look at how, the guns. Don't look at my muscles. How dare you? Going after Oprah, too. Well, oh, Oprah's on the block you lately, You guys buddy. tell me, I was kind of thinking about this, and you guys kind of tell me. I was uh, listening. I was listening to a podcast, and the guy was digging into Stern, and then she's getting an Oprah. Tell me if you guys what you think of this. There, there were people, and there were people that had a big audience and a lot of power, and you didn't fuck with them. It was uh, it was unspoken, right? But you didn't fuck with Howard Stern and you didn't fuck with Oprah. Oprah. And there's a, a couple of, uh, we probably didn't fuck with Harvey Weinstein. You know what I mean? Like there was like a handful of people. Untouchable. Yeah. You just didn't, you couldn't talk right. shit. You couldn't criticize. You couldn't, you could, you could not Career say ending shit. a word about right. Oprah. Right. Or you would be fucked up. You're destroyed. I feel like people are kind of, yeah, or Scientology. You couldn't, right. 10 years ago, you couldn't say shit about Scientology or Stern or Oprah or whatever. They're just people you just did not speak out against. And kind of little by little, like Scientology, it's just more people sort of piping up and talking shit about the people you formerly couldn't talk I, I mean, shit I think about. The tide, I mean, you're absolutely right. The tides have turned. I mean, look at your show. Yeah, I right? could talk I mean, shit about everybody. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and but, I mean, but you're able to go, look, watch me, listen to me if you want. I'm here. I'm doing my shit, and I think that it's scaring the crap out of the the what used to be the Hollywood. Well, now you know, I tell my wife that the celebrity is gone. There's no celebrity endorsement for it's, a candidate means nothing, nothing anymore. I I, I would really think, you know, the Oprah endorsement used to mean a ton of stuff. The endorsement, 
you would probably anger more people with the endorsement from mega celebrity than you would in, right. in, in the past. You, more de- more harm than good. It, it, well, I mean, but with the internet, I mean, you look at a guy like Mr. Beast. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that's changing. The, I mean, he went into the chocolate world that had been the same for 100 years. Yeah. And he's selling $200 million worth of chocolate in Hershey, and all of them are going, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> this guy. Yeah. You know, Gatorade's freaking out because he goes, I'm going to do Prime. I'm going to do, do my kid, Gatorade. He looks at me like I'm an old man. Oh, really? <laughs> He's like, what are you doing, Gatorade? What? Yeah. What is this, fucking 1980? He's, there's disruptors. <laughs> there's disruptors, called disruptors, man. And it's, yeah. The game is changing. This, and when me and my wife started kind of doing our podcast, our goal was we're going to show the real us. Mm-hmm. You know, the ups, the downs, the whole the whole thing. And, and I think people are ready to see that. They, they just want to hear the real I, shit. I... I think w- what happened with COVID is I think COVID sped up the timeline for the disruptors from 10 years to three years. Yep. So what COVID did is it took a lot of legacy, I'll say organizations, could be the New York Times, could be CNN, could be the WHO could be the CDC the staples could be the, the big, the big networks, the, 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 the staples. Yeah. The stuff you grew up with and they hurt the reputations horribly. They made people question them and they gave rise to, to all people. these other entities. And then when the stuff like the Russell brand stuff starts coming out, then it's kind of like, are they going after him because he's talking about vaccines and his anti yeah. big pharma right. and anti anti legacy media and stuff? Are they now trying to trying Keep to control? Take, are they trying to control him? Right. They're trying to. He's he's thrown off a of YouTube, even though there's no trial, right. no well, convictions. Uh, have you guys seen Bad Money? Oh, it's the I've GameStop. Heard about that. It's the GameStop yeah, story. Oh, it. right, right. You don't think that scares the shit out of the establishment that this one guy literally got on the internet and said, let's all buy this stock. Right. And it literally, I mean, they ended up, he ended up, the movie's amazing, by the way. He ends up in, in, in Senate and they're going, well, what happened here? And he's like, I just went viral. And all these kids were like, yeah, I'm buying GameStop. Right. And I'm buying GameStop. And then it, that doesn't scare the shit out of people where it's like, no, we all can talk now. Yeah, I I think so. My kind of bird's eye view from thirty thousand feet on this whole thing is: I feel like California, the government, CDC, Fauci, Rochelle Walensky, that the whole the whole crew, CNN, just just the whole cabal. Right. They started to feel like they were losing their grip. On, on their subjects. And what they needed to do at that point is loosen their grip a little bit, but they tried to tighten it. So they were kind of losing the faith of, of the people and they in California and they went harder into the lockdown. So right. it'd be like, I'm, I'm a stepdad and my stepdaughter's curfew is 10 o'clock, even though she's a senior in high school. And then someone's saying to me, but that's just going to get her to lie and say she's right. sleeping at she's people's going out house. Anyway, and right. I go, and I went, then nine o'clock. No, you know what eight. I mean? And what, eight o'clock. If she's not in this house by eight By the time the street lights come on. Because I have right, What I I'm needed to do at that point right. is go, I'm reasonable. We can do midnight. Right. You know, but you got to communicate. But we didn't do that. Fuck we started that. trying to arrest people who yeah. didn't get vaccinated. We started to lie to people about <laughs> efficacy of it. Ramps. Started start, start fucking arresting people in in, in the bay yeah. for what for fishing alone. For fishing alone. <laughs> the one Mexican who wanted to go fucking surf With fishing. His fucking spark plug. Oh, uh, that Mexican <laughs> that had to stay in that apartment yeah. and catch COVID <laughs> rather than get some vitamin D and some salt by air himself. by himself <laughs> with his spark plug. I, I believe that we become one big high school. Yes. It's one big high school, and if you are running on a treadmill and you fall and your pants get pulled off, and back in the day, nobody knew that happened, mm-hmm. <laughs> except for the people in the gym. They were mm-hmm. like, oh, remember Becky? Yeah. That fucking dumb <laughs> Becky. She fell yeah. over the, you know. But now, it's on camera. It goes viral, and all of us are in on it. Yes. You know, the fight that happened at the uh, uh, the, the chair 
you yeah. know, the, you know, uh, talk about the, the, boat, the, the dock, the, the boat, boat dock. Yeah. yeah. Nobody would have seen that shit. No. Now there's t-shirts. Oh, yeah. the chair's been a, is a symbol. Yeah. <laughs> but we're all talking about something that happened a tiny moment a million miles away from us. Right. And we all ha- we're all like, no, I remember. And you, you like, it, 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 yeah. remember when that happened? It's just giant high weird. school. Well, not only is it weird, but we're, we're not wired for this. It's not good for us, number one. Number two, I don't know where people get such fucking strong opinions about this. I was just arguing with comedian Orny Adams about the soccer kiss in the Spanish finals. I was like, yeah. your thought about that should be, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let them uh-huh. celebrate whatever they, yeah. they celebrate. I don't know. People get fucking dug in. Worked They've up. got the fucking worked, worked up. up. They have opinions. I have opinions too, but my opinions are who the fuck cares? Which is not really an opinion. It's me telling you to fucking take your opinion and fucking holster but your that's, opinion. That's Just the wrong opinion to people, though. But it's like right. it's, it's the same people that have the energy to watch my stand up special and then go fucking hated it. Now I'm gonna get on the comments. <laughs> right. I'm like I don't have that kind of energy. I don't yeah. have that kind of. I, I, I. That's my. I go well. That sucked, and then I fucking move, move on. Move on. And that's my. I mean, I don't have time to go. Oh, they. I need to let them know why Adam Carolla sucks. <laughs> I, I listened to no, four episodes and it was garbage. That's and, all yeah, chick. Like, that's all chick think. Chicks have an endless it. capacity to talk about nothing. <laughs> endless, endless. <laughs> I to get revisit so mad. things that happen that have nothing to do with anything that Dude, don't affect anyone. My wife, valid Victorian. My wow. wife, NYU. Okay. Wow. Extremely intelligent. Every night when we go to bed, fucking Real Housewives. Oh yeah. And I, I look at her and I go, "You are an intelligent human being." And you're watching this bullshit because it's chick think. Yeah, they love the fucking drama, the circle of talk talking of about nothing. bullshit. I'm just sitting there looking at her, going, "You are a smart, educated woman watching this." I'm over there trying to watch documentaries. I'm reading at night. I'm trying, and she's over here fucking. Uh, I go, she goes, "It's just mindless." I'm like, "Yes, it's fucking garbage." Yeah, get an aquarium, bitch. It, yeah, it's fucking garbage, dude. <laughs> I listen. It's unbelievable I, the fact that she can. Sit, I don't want to defend. I don't want to defend her, but I will say, I watch nonsense, but I watch it as like a sociologist. Like I'm trying to <laughs> study <laughs> society that. and who right. these cunts are right. and what's going on. Why? Why? But here's what I'm saying, and this is the, this is the zone we're living in now. Well, let's see if I can think of a, an example. Uh, Dawson, you can look for, it. I don't know why, but I was on my Twitter feed, my X feed today. I heard, uh, Trevor Noah was interviewing a trans activist, right? And it was just, it was a clip. I think I may have favorited it or liked it. But that's another it. I trend. Guess we, can, we can say that. Let's get foreigners that are not from here to do political shows and shit on America for us. Oh, I love, that's what I, I hate Trevor Noah the most because I hate when people come from a place that's got <laughs> way more problems than we have. And they just shit South on us. Africa, and, and, and by the way, <laughs> you know who else does this? It takes a certain kind of bravado to come here from a place where they have real like ethnic cleansing and shit right. going on and then come over here and just shit all over while well, you're a millionaire by right. the way just come over here and shit all over our government and our way of life and which there's people Trevor in Noah america go yes, yes 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 it's unbelievable the worst is uh uh charlise theron theron oh who she comes here theron theron, theron. 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 she comes here from south africa she adopts like three black kids and then announces there are many cities she won't take her kids to because they're in danger mm-hmm. because we're that racist. Meanwhile, Although the bitch never names the cities. Right. Never. Hey, here's the whole thing. Now, everybody. Right. If you're going to talk shit, city names. Right. In I want to Roanoke, hear. Virginia. Right. Like you name the fucking Muncie, Indiana. That's where name I Name the go. fucking cities, right. bitch. Big Sky, Montana. That's Fuck right. That place. <laughs> Plenty Wood, Montana, as long as we're in Montana. You fucking name the place. Don't just give us that right. we're such right. a racist nation you right. can't. By the way, your kids are staying at the fucking Four Seasons. Uh, you remember Real Sports? Where your yeah. kids couldn't uh, go as a black right. neighborhood so, in one of those I'm watching Real Sports. They're doing this whole thing about soccer, or I'm sorry, football. Where if there's a black player on the field, they will throw bananas on the field. Yes, I saw that. You saw that. And I'm thinking to myself, and we're racist? Oh, 
I mean, because instead this we're is wearing like their in, jerseys. This is like in all, Spain, like, yeah. I think. Uh, in Spain, so, I think. It, like, literally, they, she's doing a corner kick, and he's getting right. pelted with bananas. I and, talked about it on the yeah, show. Yeah, and, and you're sitting there going, and we're the we're the we're the bad ones. Yeah, I mean, I, and it's 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 insane. But meanwhile, my son is wearing a Dak Prescott jersey. Right. <laughs> Right. I mean, you know, he, he, my dad, my son's like, Dad, I, I love him. He's my favorite quarterback. Okay, we'll get you a jersey. He's not. Th- I'm not like, hey, son, we should be throwing bananas. Is what we. Yeah, I right. Mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, did, but we're the yeah. bad ones. Did it's, uh, it's insane. They act like we invented slavery. They act like we invented <laughs> racism. We we somehow pioneered everything. They all think we have a fucking time machine. Right. We don't have a time machine. Back to your wife. No. <laughs> Back to that bitch. The I, I don't the mindless TV. I don't mind. It's when these people run for office. And then they get elected, and they go right back into this mindless circle chick talk. It's yeah. just circle talk. You can't – Kamala Harris, I think you can also find a clip. I think she was asked about her stance on abortion or something. It's like just circle. Just circle <laughs> talk when we come together then we're better together and there's always a seat at the nowhere. table and we need uh i i we need i dream of a place of unity and, and a prosperity popcorn. and no child should be left behind and ever it's like just just that's you screaming about sanctuary cities What's you happening? need to build shelters right. bitch right like you can't it's, just circle talk it it's tofu yeah. It's fucking it's, tofu, which is the, uh, the cactus, white man's so. cactus. Gringo's cactus. It's, gringo's, it's a dildo. <laughs> All right. We will try to find. Well, we'll take a break. We'll do it after this. Well, let me tell you about my friends over at Lands End Business. Uniforms. Yeah. You got to have the right one. That's right. It's part of your merch, part of your branding. I should say branding. Yeah, you want to look good, you want to look sharp, and people want to know where you work. So don't slap a logo on a generic shirt. Try Lands End Business. Made-to-order uniforms that become part of your brand. Since 1993, thousands of businesses have counted on Lands End Business to outfit employees. Whether you're a carpet cleaner, done that, moving company, eh, did some of that on the side, worked at a pizza shop, you are covered no more. Fidgeting and itchy work shirts, premium fabric that fits employees and makes them comfortable and happy. Email, chat, and phone customer support so they got you covered. Even set up an online store where employees can order items they need without worrying about inventory. It's Land's End. Am I right, Dawson? See why thousands of companies count on Land's End Business. Go to business.landsend.com slash Adam and use promo code Adam for 20% off. That's business.landsend.com slash Adam. Promo code Adam for 20% off. All right. Steve Trevino in the studio. Very funny comedian. Got podcasts, got dates, and you can go to Steve Trevino. Dot com and you can find out where he's going to be and you can listen to his podcast steve ravino at uh, trevino and captain evil wherever yes. you find finer podcasts the idea that they're just sitting around and talking about this endlessly this is more chick what, what they do it's a real discussion is they interview they they introduce something that's insane and then we just have endless amounts yeah. of time to argue about it that's all. Then there's legislation of we need three bathrooms or we need women to be able to go, who I, men who identify as women to be going. And then it's like it just could be talking about the border, could be talking about taxes, could be talking about education. No, we fucking are not. And we we just, are going to argue about nothing for the rest of our lives. And if you misgender me or don't use the correct pronouns, then we're going to stop the argument no. and then we're going to argue about the pronouns. No. 100% chick thing. That's exactly the way me and my wife argue. And it's when funny. When I go to my wife and I go, I have an issue, and she'll go, well, let me tell you what's wrong with you. Right. <laughs> well, but no, but we want to talk about what's wrong with you. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, you can you can take the cock and the balls and throw them right <laughs> into a wood chipper, but you still take that feminine brain that likes to argue. You still take that that brain. All right. <laughs> you can throw the dick and balls in a chipper. But uh, guess what? All right, should we do a little news, Chris? Yeah, we can do that. Um, so let, let's uh, kick oh, it off. Oh, wait, I think we have Kamal Harris's uh, non, non-answer. So basically what they're doing is they're saying to politicians, uh, look, you got to come up with a time. If, if you're 
into abortion, but you don't want abortion in the third trimester or when the kid's crowning or whatever, then what's what's the cutoff? What's right. the date? Is it 15 weeks? Is it 20 weeks? Is it 12 weeks? Like what, what's, what well, is, what is your, which I think every politician should have to do. Everyone, if you want to talk about abortion, you can say I'm totally against abortion or, or you can say I'm for abortion for uh, rape victims or, you know, yeah. Oh, and I'm, I'm an abortions into the kid's heads coming out of the vagina. Right. Go ahead and stab Kill it in the bastard. back of the neck. Or um, you have, to, if, if it's not one or the other, then you have to pick a week. If you go, okay, nothing past this, which right. always makes sense to me because uh, I'm all for the morning after pill. You know, the dude didn't pull out. You were drunk. Fine. Morning, morning after pill. But at some point, that thing becomes viable. Right. And then you're killing somebody. And this answer, which Newsom gives, is like, it's between a mother and the doctor. No, it's not. You can't. Hey. I'm going to go find a doctor and go, like, I'm thinking about killing my wife. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes, I do. All right. Well, that's between me, me and my physician. It's going to suck when my mom's like, yeah, you know, I'm done with this guy. Right. Like, what, 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 what mom? Like, right. All right. We'll, we'll listen to her face the nation answer. So what, what is it that you believe? I mean, what week of pregnancy should abortion access be cut off? We need to restore the protections of Roe versus Wade. Which We're was, not trying to do something new. Well, that There's, was nebulous because it was about viability, which could be anywhere between 20 to 24 weeks. And But it, so, no, 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 no. Let, that's, let's, that let, was me, in let me be very clear. The Women's Health Protection Act that let the White me be, House also let me be she's, very she's clear. going to be clear. Uh, did you just ask me a direct <laughs> <laughs> question? Wait, wait, ask how many weeks? Uh, don't you? No, whoa, whoa, slow no, the fuck no, down with no, your direct no. questions. <laughs> yeah, no. You need to pump the fucking brakes, Adam, with your fucking direct questions. She's just halting. Her. I think there's a little more. She's so horrible. In, let me be very clear. The Women's Health Protection Act that let the White me be, House also Let me enjoys. be very clear. From day one, the president has been clear. I have been clear. We need to put back the protections that are in Roe v. Wade into law. Since the Supreme Court took it, Congress has the power and ability to pass legislation to put those protections back in law, and Joe Biden will sign that bill. So that is what we want. But does it need to be specific in terms of defining and where that guarantee goes up to and where it does not? At which week of pregnancy? We need to put back in place the protections <laughs> oh of Roe versus Wade. You we know are why not, I'm asking you this I, question, but, though, it, because we're not trying to. But we're not trying to do anything that did not exist before June. Yeah, what we of last bitch. year? It's, we well, are it, saying it wasn't no, crafted but, into law, and that's why I'm asking you for the specifics there, because Republicans say the lack of a precise date in cutting it off. You know this. Is they say that allows Democrats to perform abortions up until, you know, birth. Which is ridiculous. Which is statistically which is, which is, not accurate. And, and it's ridiculous. I understand and it's that. a mischaracterization so, of the point. No, the point so, is. No, but the do point we need is, to be more, that's not the point. She's waving it's, off questions. Like, don't sit down for the interview, bitch, or have something in your fucking head well, that resembles an answer. That's you're the kind get of asked. shit that you, you, you ask the question. They do that shit, and then you lose your shit, and then all of a sudden they go, you're fucking crazy. Right. Why are you acting crazy? You're fucking crazy made me crazy. You know what the number one answer with chicks? You get into this big argument over a nothing burger. Right. And over nothing. And then at some point, you go, I didn't even want to argue about that. You don't want to argue about I don't want to argue. They just go, I don't want to argue. And you go like... I just asked you a question. That's all. You That's can it. answer it. But or, now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're over fucking here. Arguing about right. my tone. Well, what Kamala Harris needs to do is just go, I'm not going to answer that question. Right. Yeah. I'm not. You, you can't just keep not answering. But I don't know is, it, is an appropriate question, too. Okay. I mean, answer. Yeah. You can say, you I know. don't know. Or I'm not going to answer. Hey, Adam, I don't, I, man, I don't, I don't know. I, okay. I, I don't That's have good. The, yeah. I don't have the answer to that. And I, I don't know. Right. All right, well, fuck, we can move on. You obviously don't know. <laughs> I but. just like that at a certain point when she knew the chick was going to ask for a fourth time, she started waving about the her hand. hand? Yeah, hey, the, hey, 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 bitch, no. pump the fucking brakes. Who do, who do you think you are asking me questions? I know. it was. Don't uh, ask me. I came on this podcast, Adam. Don't you dare fucking ask me a question. You can find uh, Doss. You can find Gavin Newsom doing the exact same thing from 10 minutes ago, too, which is which is funny. I'm now I just... 
But listen, there's going to be... When you teach journalism at journalism school now, it can't be the same curriculum that it was 40 years ago. You have to go, Uh, these assholes are not going to answer the question the first five times you ask. You have to ask a seventh time. And have five different ways of asking asking the same question. Yes, they will not answer. Which is literally the definition of insanity. Yes. I Uh, keep asking you a question, expecting different results, and you don't give me different fucking results. This is now crazy. All right. Do we have some news, uh, Max Pana? Yeah, so there's this uh, clip that went viral recently, um, and I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're here too. By the way, your hairline is fantastic. Jesus Christ! I know. Oh, is that a fucking helmet from Chips? It's a lot. It's a lot here. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus, that, it's man. fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm glad Steve's here. He's a family man, so I want to get his thoughts on this too. So there's this video clip uh, that went viral about a mom who is really uh, excited about her son playing a football game, and she hugs him after the game, and then her f- her friend films the embrace. And she posts it on her Instagram, gets about 10 million views on her personal Instagram. People are talking about this. So here's the clip. So her son's 15. She jumps into her son's arms. Mm-hmm. And he's carrying. And everyone's just like, whoa. What's going Like, they, everyone's really bothered by this. They're like, not really bothered, though. That's my, my new theory is whether it's the Spanish football soccer coach or the hot mom jumping on the sun. I don't think anyone is really bothered by it. I I just don't. You said the key word, hot mom. Yeah, very hot mom, 38 years old. If she was a fat slob and jumped on her son, Uh, we would not be having this conversation. If she looked like the chick who was being interviewed by Trevor Noah... (laughs) <laughs> First off, the son would be in the hospital. Get your but dick secondly, off my chest, bro. Nobody would. Some, <laughs> yeah. some hey, mom, could dicks. you get your balls off my gun? <laughs> Thanks, Jeez. mom. Mom, I feel more uncomfortable now that your dick's bigger than mine. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's that it, it, she looks she, like she looks good. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. thousands and thousands of people complaining about it. Um, even the son got into the comments too what did the son say he said how about you leave my mom alone she's never abused me or done anything sexual with me or my friends or groomed me she's my mom she is my hero the video of us hugging was a hug go bother someone else and maybe hug your own kids you all need jesus damn wow oh, hot like jesus kid. mom she is hot though yeah she's, oh there are uh, yeah oh my god there you go she's very, there we, yeah yep. she's very attractive yeah, yeah. so 38 She's jumping on her son. And, and this poor kid, too. The, people don't realize this kid goes to school every day. Yeah, he has to deal with this And now. his buddies are like, dude, your mom. Yeah. Her tits, bro. Of course. Like, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> and then now all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, now your mom's boning you. Like, it's. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. I, it, but again, if she wasn't hot, mm-hmm. it's a non-issue. Yeah, you're right. It's but I mean, non-issue. look, I've, I had a friend who, who lip kissed his dad. Like goodbye mm. when his dad would drop him off till he was like freshman in high school. Was it that soccer coach from Spain? <laughs> I know. I kiss my son on the lips all the time. Oh, I, you do. I did a lot when I was when he was a a kid. He was, but he was sweet. Son, he was very when he, you know three years old, four years. He was very sweet natured. You know, like you could go go give a guy a kiss or mommy a kiss or whatever. You just go. The he, sweet he, kid, he was yeah. a sweet kid. And I do, and I hug him and. Well, that was that, all that. Our brains work the same because I was about to say the same thing. My, my, my son's almost eight. He jumps on my lap and hugs me. And I just think to myself, it, we're getting very close to him not wanting to hug me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you're a parent, I love hugging my kids. I love squeezing on them. I love cuddling you know, on the sofa, watching football. Or with my, my daughter loves Moana. We, we sit on the sofa together. I, I love squeezing on her. And there is going to come a time where my son's going to be like, hey, dude, like, don't and I, I just you know and, and enjoy it while you can yeah and, and my wife's like I don't care I'm hugging them forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll jump on yeah him. but she can yeah yeah she's yeah. definitely a milf and I was thinking about it I mean she could have a better you, shitter you would but. hate it you would hate well you Mexicans like a big caboose <laughs> and we do like the shitters the the fart tank we call them on the construction side but yeah, um, right. turd cutters <laughs> turd cutters <laughs> <laughs> she pick up a hydrant no hands. <laughs> <laughs> God, I want us to be getting that turd cutter so bad. The, um, but so this guy has to take a ribbing from his friends because his mom, they're calling her MILF. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I was thinking MILF is, is bad. It's a, what, mother, I'd like to it's fuck. Pie. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, but okay, American way, Pie is what But it's right. bad. John MILF Chow. is bad, but MIDS is worse. That's mom, I did fuck. 
Oh, you, find, you throw yeah. you throw yeah. a D in there, and it gets a lot fucking yeah. worse. Yeah, you lose some friends that way. All right. Well, speaking of fucking, we got Newsom with his uh, abortion talk. I don't not answer. Let's try to figure this. He's one gonna be out. very clear. He'll be very clear. Well, I, the thing I like about Kamala Harris, she goes, "Let me make myself clear," or "I've been clear." Yeah. That that you have not. Yeah. The, the, just got more the confusing. Opposite of clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you be clear about what does that mean uh, after birth what, abortion after birth? it's made up it's a political well, Can you just be clear about political. what limits on abortion should be uh, It's a political thing people are not seeking abortion but What is at the what is the policy the what should it be The policy it's not up to Donald Trump or me it's up to you to women that have to bear that responsibility uniquely and distinctively and the reality is, it's a canard. It's a political frame. It's total BS. And it's exactly where they need to go because they know they've gone too far but there has to be some side. kind... Well, let me just talk about your state of California. Yeah. As you well know, there is a law in books that preceded you uh, that says that you can have an abortion up until viability, which is about 24 weeks. That's right. Is that something that you that's, support that's personally? That's in statute in the state of California. That said... There was a constitutional amendment that we placed on the ballot that, that has some nuance in it. And so that's an area that's being adjudicated in public opinion and likely will ultimately be so adjudicated. Is in the it courts. the government's role then? I know you, you said it's, it's up to women. To make that decision. So there should be nothing no, that, on the books? This is, this, is a, this is a false flag. This is where they need to go. <laughs> Was five in minutes order of not to get answering out of the, the mess question. They've created. Just give me a number. Because they Dick. don't believe in fundamental choice and freedom for women. They don't. Period. Full stop. And this I whole issue says full stop. is a political issue. And so, with respect, I'm not surprised that Donald Trump is saying this. This is exactly what you hear every single one of them say next week down at the Reagan Library. And at the end of the day, those examples are so extreme, so rare. When you have. Uh when you have literally viability issues that are deeply personal and painful, uh, others have said it more. Adam, how do you learn to talk like that? You picked out the name of you the baby. You have to spend a lot of time with chicks, and you have to tuck your time, junk between you your legs. For political purposes, I, I, I don't understand. Like, like, is there training? I mean, honestly, like, listening very carefully. How, how Wait, you, is she going to? Is she going to answer? All right, let's just see what you're saying. Yeah, you do not believe it is the role of government, nationally or or state government. No, to smart. have to have any limits on the books uh, legally. The state of California has long believed in viability. I've long believed in viability. We went forward with a constitutional amendment that's created some questions as it relates to this. My my point is, no one wants to see late late term abortions. No one's out there promoting that. That's what the Democratic Party's position is. Not what my personal position is. In those rare and extremely rare. All right, and but he won't give a number. He won't answer the fucking question. He's which, dodging. But by the way, it's talent. I, that's what, fucking yeah, talent. talent. It's impressive. It, oh, he came in here for an hour and did it. It was awesome. That's talent. It to be talent. able to do an hour of fucking bullshit. It's not like he pulled it off, though. No, he <laughs> yeah. didn't pull it off. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't watch that one. <laughs> he just looked like a fucking giant retarded person with, with me. <laughs> Andrea Mitchell, whoever, softball, CNN, you know, fucking cheerleader for his party. They're gonna, they'll let him get away with it. Right. I didn't do it. Just ate his lunch. Uh, he, it didn't seem like he made sense when he was on this show for anyone who heard that. But why is the younger generation not getting into politics? Well, first off, but, who would want their garbage and their dirty laundry it, just scattered? Well, just, first off, yeah, why would you look? I would run, but literally. <laughs> well, also, if you're going to get into politics and you're thinking about being a Republican, you're just going to get called a racist and Constantly. a homophobe and a sexist. Constantly. And that that'll be it. Like, yeah. and they'll dig up anything yeah. you ever said or thought or wrote in any yearbook from high school. Yep. Elementary. And elementary yeah. now, my dear Watson. All right. Let's take a quick break. Come back. We'll finish off uh, the news right after this. Let me tell you about Angie homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. 
You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O Rewards next time you visit, and you can start earning points on your first purchase. Sign up for both email and tax and get even more out of your membership. And right now, members receive two times three times, up to eight times O Rewards points on select purchases. Those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster. You receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'Reilly Auto Dot com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace, you know, if you're a uh, postal sort worker in Enid, Oklahoma, it's a very low chance that day to day that you're ever going to hop into a body of water, dive into a body of water with a knife in your teeth. However, don't you hit the sea quite often? Paddle boarding, kayaking, what are you out there doing? Why not strap a, you know, a, a fixed blade to your ankle there? Chances will go up. That's for dang sure, man. Next work on the cake. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Steve Trevino in the studio. Yeah, all I could think about is the guys doing the surf fishing. With the, Mexican. With the spark plug. You know what? Next time I'm walking on the beach and I see one of those Mexicans surf fishing. Let me see your fucking weight. In his jeans. I'll reel it in. Reel it in. Let me I'll, see what I'll, you I'll make up. I'll, I'll get like a fake badge. You know what I mean? Wildlife inspector. Yeah. State of California. A ver. A ver. Uh-huh. Déjame ver. Oh. A ver. All right. What is that? That's a Delco spark plug that's been fouled. All right, buddy. <laughs> You're going back to Reseda. Get your ass back. It's your, your fucking, fucking ass. People are here, white people are here to enjoy the sea. You have a house to build tomorrow. That's right. You got to sling some stucco and here. stack some cinder blocks. Let's go. <laughs> and, and watch some wife bitch at you for your job. I've been I've been surveilling you. Been out here for seven hours. There's nothing in that Hot bucket. Fucking zero. Hot zero. <laughs> zero. But and then you also see him on the freeway and the, the fishing poles going out the window. Oh, yeah. You know, you'll see that like full, no truck. <laughs> Right. No gear, just a fishing pole out the fucking window. <laughs> yeah. And his Corolla. Yeah. Just cruising back home. And that, that was his fucking ploy. It's like the dudes that go on bachelor parties and take golf clubs. I think I think you're right. They're not golfing, they're fucking. Yeah. But uh, honey, we're I going think, to Vegas to play I, golf. I think you Bullshit. stumbled yeah. on to something, which is surf fishing may be the Mexicans golf and that guy's <laughs> golf just to fucking get out of the house Takes not to time. hear anything have a you're drink gone. no one if you said to your wife i'm going golfing she's not going to call you in 45 minutes going why aren't you back yet like right. it's all it's all day yeah. you're going to drink during the day Look, you're not going to be judged that's why i started smoking mm. because i'd go i want a break and they would go i go they get a break and they go well, that's a smoke break right and I'm like, well, fucking, I, I smoke. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. I'll fucking have a smoke break, and then that boom. Now I'm a smoker. But I so think he was never a fisherman. I think I think the Mexican. It's Mexican it's, golf. It's, it's Mexican free golf. golf. And all and they need is one, one pole, one pole, that's one spark plug. plug. <laughs> They're fucking good, dude. <laughs> hey, one hey, foul plug. Hey, puto, what are you gonna do with that spark plug? <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw it away. No, 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 cabron. No, no, no. He's got his little set and a little case. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, look, babe. Uh, these are yeah. Like, look at my lures. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got him, he's got him on his hat. Yeah, he's got, he's got, a got spark plug hat. stuck to his hat. <laughs> he puts his construction helmet on with the fucking yeah. spark plugs. The uh, leaf blower fouled a plug last week, and now I got <laughs> another nah, nah, lure. Nah, nah, cabrón. Nah, nah, cabrón. I'm going fishing. 
no, no, I'm going fishing. Yeah. Where are my fishing jeans? <laughs> Get my fishing slacks. I've never my seen. Dress shoes. I've never seen any of these dudes in trunks. They do not own swim trunks. The most they'll You've do. You've never is, seen a Mexican no, swim trunk. The most they'll do is the cut off jeans. The, they'll cut them off right below the knee. Yeah, like shipwreck style. Like not even Daisy Duke. And you know? still, but still belt. Yeah, belt. Belt. <laughs> they need a. Place. They will swim in blue jeans. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, when I was That's younger, I was thinking like, like, there was a time where if you needed some swim trunks, you'd have to go down to the Val Surf and and buy some OPs or something, thirty three bucks or whatever. But today's Amazon world, where there's board shorts for eight dollars, like there is no more excuses no for, for Mexicans yeah. to be with the jeans, and then the sand gets all of them, and they get all fucking wet, and then they go sit in the sand in the wet I, jeans. Dude, I, I just how fucking uncomfortable can you make yourself? I just picture one Christmas, him getting a pair of swim trunks and crying, like yeah, I finally I got what I needed. Yeah, like I just can't imagine. Why wouldn't you just fucking buy some swim trunks, guy? I don't put that in your repertoire. I don't. You I can think, wear the same ones for years. Oh, I yeah. think it's. I, I think it's cultural. Yeah. No, I don't want the built-in underwear, puto. I, I don't want the built-in. We brought, <laughs> we brought Jose from the shop. <laughs> we guys working on cars, and we brought him with us to Pebble Beach one year about three years ago, and we're like, Jose, you can come with us, but. We're going to be going to the Quail, which is like a $1,500 ticket. It's an upscale event. Right. We're going to be going to the Acura party and the Bentley party. These are high-end cocktail, nice nice rent-out, $10 million house. The whole thing. Models serving drinks. Jose, you got to bring a shirt with buttons on it. <laughs> Please. You've got to bring a fucking... It's got to have a collar yeah. on it. We can't go to the party yeah. with you in your black t-shirt and then we get to the fucking pebble beach and we're all getting ready to head out and everyone's got their blazer on and stuff and jose comes he's got a black t-shirt right and we go jose it, what the fuck? and he's like this is my good black this is my <laughs> yeah. not this is the one without hey, gravy and i tucked it in i tucked it in so you see i'm fat and it's like you don't have a shirt with a collar like a button on it like, in, in like old navy old navy a polo type fourteen dollars Something. And it's like, I think it's just a cultural thing. It's like, yeah. I am it's, wearing a black t-shirt to the Rolls Royce party. If my dad was getting dressed up, he was tucking it in. That was, that was the... Getting dressed up. So yeah. if I got to be in front of the judge, yep. I'll take my t-shirt and tuck it in. going to church, I'm tucking in. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, Charles Bronson style. Tight. Jesus Christ. Tight tuck. And it starts early too. When I would go to the beach, like with my Mexican friends, they'd wear shirts. They'd wear shirts into the ocean. Shirts and jeans. <laughs> Straight on. Fuck yeah. it. It's so weird. It is weird. And I wonder why. I wonder what it is. And it is heavy. But I mean, my dad, I'm telling you, tuck it in. And that was him getting dressed up. Tuck the Maybe, shirt. I, should oh, start it. Maybe I should start an outreach or well, You never know you if know? you're going to get in a fight, you know? And right. You got to tuck it in. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Maybe when I'm looking at these guys' lures with their spark plugs, I should <laughs> offer them some counseling with shorts. Talk to them a little bit. Talk to them about trunks. Have you heard of these? What? There's something, now I want you to sit but, down, Jorge. There's something called Velcro. It's going to fucking blow your it's mind. It's going to blow your mind. I know buttons dry and fit, zippers. Get dry. As soon as you get out, you'll get out. It'll be dry. dry. They got pockets in it. Pockets. It's some, mesh. The whole it's thing. It's mesh. You could put the spark plugs in your pocket. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. <laughs> but does it have for my belt? Look, There's no belt. No, you can't wear a leather this. belt. You're not getting it, dude. <laughs> no, you're, you're not right. fucking getting it. And my belt? No. <laughs> fucking, you're not. Where am I going to put my wallet? We have swim shirts. <laughs> they're like the shirt you're wearing into the sea, but they're made to go to into dry. the ocean. They dry Sunblock. fast. They're it's comfortable. Nice. It's crazy. Hey, Adam, it's crazy. I'm good. You're being aggressive. Okay. I'm gonna sorry. Fucking, you're good, hey, but you're... hey, puto, let me get my How many years have you been happy. fishing here? <laughs> yeah. How many years? 30. 30? You ever <laughs> caught anything? Never. Okay. Never. <laughs> but I'm no, saying, plus, are you sure this isn't just an hey, excuse to I go only away? Ca I only catch a buzz, puto. <laughs> Thank God you got your old lady, that machete. <laughs> you guys should be going hungry. <laughs> Killing an iguana. <laughs> the fuck do you find an iguana? It's cactus, man. Yeah. I'm all telling right, you, my mom you still does it. Um, all right. Well, I'm so glad you got an electric vehicle now, Adam. Uh -huh. um, mm. Oh, I heard you about talking about that. The yeah. uh, gas is six. I paid six forty. It's six seventy. It's six, it's seven bucks in Malibu. It is oh, seven fucking dollars a gallon. Have you seen the new um, uh, Hummer? 
GMC Hummer electric? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Because what are you driving? What kind of gay shit are you driving? <laughs> I got an Audi. <laughs> oh, the Audi does it now. Yeah. Pure electric. So Cadillac's going pure electric in 2025? Everything kind of yeah, like does is yeah, going to be. Doing yeah. It, yeah. I, I, my wife wanted one. I go, I go, honey, you forget to put fucking gas. Right. And there's gas stations on every corner. Right. I live in Texas. The 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 there's very few pluggers. Stations like the electric charging, charging stations. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's very few. I'm like, honey, you, I'm going to get the phone call on the road. How you know I'm stuck and and get a gas vehicle and for now. Yeah, she'll let her crash her own yeah. gas vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crash your own Land Rover. I, I was out to dinner with someone who moved to Texas, and they're like, why do you hate L.A.? And I'll go, I, I'll just give you an example. We pay the most in taxes. We pay the highest gas prices. We have the worst roads in the country. I could keep going, but what else do you really need to yeah. know? The most in gas, and that money's the big taxing tax is supposed to go to the roads. Right. The most in gas with the worst roads. If it gas documented was, worst roads in America. Yes. What else? Do you need to know about how the state is run? We pay if, the, the if gas was results. free in California, it'd still be two dollars. Right, that's right. fucking insane. If, right. if they go, it, you know what? Fuck taxes. it, we're going to give you the yeah. gas. Yeah, it's still two dollars worth of tariffs that's and insane. levies and taxes. And Meanwhile, gas. I'm buying premium in Texas for what am I at right now? Three bucks, three bucks, three what? and a half. And speaking yeah. of the poor Mexican, where are they? I was like, I was in uh, La Cañada, California, a few months back. And this Mexican had his big Dodge Ram pickup truck, and just it had rolling. a trailer on it, and it had it was filled with branches. And you know, this, this guy just did a major tree pruning or whatever. This fucking sled is getting four miles to the gallon. At least. And this guy's just sitting there filling it up, cling, cling, six bucks a gallon. This is a few months yeah. back. But, I mean, this poor Mexican guy is going to cost $140 to, to do fucking his fill his truck up. Yeah. It's kicking the shit out of the poor people. Rich people drive Teslas. Rich people work from home. Rich people don't have a gardener's truck filled with equipment. Going, by the way, yeah. they don't live and in Beverly Hills, they drive there from Pacoima. And then they sit there and go, well, why does it cost so much to just cut my trees? Right. Well, motherfucker, I have a $150 gas bill out the gate. Yeah. Yes. That's my cost out right. the fucking gate. Yeah. I can't make any money around here. Fucking retards. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, look, I, I made the mistake of talking great about Texas. It's terrible. It's horrible. <laughs> don't move there. Don't, yeah. don't move there. Nobody it's a there. piece of shit. Uh, Snowstorms. It, it's 105. Don't come. Don't come. It's ter- don't come. Everybody in my neighborhood that has moved in in the past two years, all California. Yeah. All of them. That's right. Every one of them. Because my neighbor, they're fucking up California. It's yeah. not that people don't want to live in California. California is an amazing state. Yeah. It's just if you fuck it up enough, people will leave. And that's yeah. what's happening. And yeah, they're doing that to the old people, right? They're starting to tax these these retirements. And they're, they're going, hey, Everything. I need to get the Everywhere fuck out of here, too. they can get money. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, too. I mean, it's. I lived here for 14 years. I got in a um, hit and run. Well, not a hit and run. I got they, they ran a red light. They hit me and my wife. We get out. They clearly hit me. I end up getting sued by the driver. I mean, by the, by the passenger of the driver that hit me. Right. We got sued by him. They hit us. Right. I go, but they hit us. They go, well, they're both illegal. Neither one of them have insurance. And I'm like, well, uh, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. And I'm getting sued. Yes. Happened to a friend of mine. What the fuck is happening really? right now? Oh, yeah. That was when I left. Yeah. But after that, I, I told my wife, I go. Oh, by the way, the law's go. on their side. That's how California rolls. That's how California rolls. I got hit. Right. Right. That's how. By somebody that didn't have a driver's no, you license. you pay taxes. Yeah. The, you're fucked. That's how it's it works. unbelievable. Absolutely. And that's when I left. I said, I got to go yeah. back home. And I, I mean, you know, I grew up in Texas. I'm a Texas guy. My parents, I want my kids to have grandparents, you know, mm-hmm. so my, my parents are always over. And, oh, they must love um, the cactus. Oh, my God. They fucking right? love it, too. They, <laughs> jeans, beach, they do the whole thing. And they go out there. And, and I remember my, my, my father in law walks around our neighborhood and he, he comes in one day and he goes, Man, they're going to think this Mexican won the lottery. And I pointed out my face. I go, motherfucker, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your daughter has a nice shitter. And that's what got you in this neighborhood. You're welcome. You're welcome. God. It'll be ironic when other states start building walls for California. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. For Californians to move. Well, what makes me laugh the most is when I hear my you know, California friends like, Steve, I'm moving to Texas. And I go, oh, great. Where? Austin. I'm like, well, you're not moving to Texas. Right. 
And you're, and you're you're moving to Austin, and you're going to recreate what you fled. It's already happening. It's already happening. It's already happening. Right. Austin is a disaster, right? Because yeah. the hipster showed up with their circle talk chick thing <laughs> yeah. and fucked everyone. We don't need yeah. the police. We need community ambassadors. All right, yeah. here we go. It's on, and we're inclusive. Well, okay. all I see is white people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just see white people here. All right. What well, else speaking you of got? EVs, so um, the energy secretary Jennifer Groundholm last month she was doing this four day EV road trip. You know, just oh, to talk yeah, about yeah. yeah, from from North Carolina, Tennessee, and so uh, there's now been a report where uh, while she's doing the road trip, she calls one of her staffers. And she got some range anxiety. Yeah, she goes, "Hey, I'm running out. I'm running out of juice. I need you to meet me at the next charging station and uh, and hold the spot for me so I can charge mm-hmm. my car." So her staffer goes, drives her regular car, her gas her, powered uh, car, your gas yeah. powered car, yeah. waits in the spot. And there's a line of people trying to charge their car. Sure. They call 911 on this staffer who's holding. Poor, poor, poor staffer, by poor the way. Staffer. Who's just doing what the fuck she's doing. Just doing what I've been told uh. to do. And, uh, yeah, it gets 911 called on her. But yeah. how, much of an asshole, how much of an asshole are you that you're like, oh, I'm on a road trip. I need you to be now on a road trip. Right. right. So that you can park in a spot so right. that I don't have to get in line like the average people. And, oh, and fuck. There is, and I, I've told everyone there is range anxiety because um, I went from Malibu oh, to I heard you talking about Willow that, Springs. I had no idea. That- 90 miles away with a full charge of 300. When I got there, it was 150. I didn't know that. So, you know what? It's what they don't tell you, what they need to tell you when you buy an electric car, which is if you're just driving around the city, the range will be about accurate. But if you think you're driving highway to Vegas at 85 miles an it's hour, not happening. it's not, it'll, here's what it'll be like it'll be like, uh, Steve, you got a thousand dollars in your account, right. in your in your savings account. So you go, okay, I'll take out a hundred bucks. Okay, now you have seven hundred dollars left, like, and you go, minute. what? And then yeah. you go, okay, I'll take out another hundred bucks. Now you have Guess three, what? you have yeah. three hundred dollars left in your savings account, <laughs> I don't and you're think like, this math wait works. a minute, <laughs> yeah. it said I had a thousand in there, and all I did was took out two hundred. Yeah, I know you're down to three hundred. You better but fucking put it, some more money in this account. And but like, does the computer? Why do we have the range finder? Right. But What's, does the computer tell you that? Does no, it the say computer, like if you go 70, you have this much range? The computer range. doesn't right. really adjust for it. The computer goes, you got Willow Springs is 90 miles away. You got 300 miles range. You get to, you get there. You've scrubbed off 150 miles off the range. But it doesn't say if you drive this fast. Right. No, you'll get the you'll get it in that if you get into the city and you get on the brake and you do stuff like that, it'll it'll sip it it'll be much more different it'll be much different but they don't and maybe it works out to 300 if you do the city and do the whatever but the anxiety is is you got 300 range vegas is 281 miles right. away you ain't fucking getting to vegas there's no way happening. you're getting to vegas with your 300 even though range. vegas is 278 from right, here, right 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 well, That's so right. i had the um the chevy volt when mm-hmm. i lived here had the Chevy Volt, you do the fucking, you can do the carpool, right? You get the whole thing. But what I liked about the Chevy Volt is that you had 50 miles battery, and then it kicked into gas. Right, right, yeah. So you were able to go, all right, well, you know, I go to work and back 60 miles, then 10 miles of that is gas. That's right, sense. yeah. So that's right. better that it had that motor that would kick in for you right? if you needed to. Right. But it just... Power alone, it's like, well, now I have to sit at fucking Bucky's. Yeah. For have, I have to have lunch here now? People are waiting in line. And as I told everyone when I was heading back from Willow Springs to Corona, California, which gave me range anxiety, I had to stop at a charging thing and there was a fucking altercation, man. Oh, I heard I, you talking about it. You pulled, pulled right out. in. I pulled right in, not knowing the line. First off, it's, it's kind of unclear where you wait in line because. If you wait right behind the car that's charging, you'll block the the parking lot off. It's so like then there's a gap. Line, yeah, yeah, there's a gap, and if you right. you're coming in the other direction, you don't see the line. You right. slide in. I slid in. Then some brother slid in. When I slid out, and then he started screaming at the guy who was waiting in line. Like it's gonna happen. But but you were like, they're like, oh, it's Adam Carolla. People, <laughs> well, you gotta <laughs> think about good. it. Yeah. People who the drive, black guy, fuck that piece <laughs> of shit. People who drive electric. Cars are 
pretty self-entitled kind of pieces of shit already. Already, it's, so it's the now new Prius. it's the new Prius. You're telling a dude yeah. who's driving an all-electric car in Malibu back off and wait over there. Like, there's going to be some. There's going to be some dust up. Yeah, there's going to be some white privilege coming. happening. Yeah, the good no, news yeah. is no one has a gun and no one knows how to kick ass. <laughs> Neither one of them. Right. And there's no high speed chase because right. you right. get right the range. The fucking yeah. range. No so range. I was, I was thinking about the staff and it reminded me of that store that time where um, we were flying Southwest. Adam, me, you, and uh, his our, his manager Mike August, we were we were getting on a flight Southwest. It's open seating. Right. But Adam didn't want to get on the plane early because he's he's having a drink or something. But he wanted me to go in there early. And oh sit, yeah, you got to post same up. Thing. Yeah, yeah, post you up, gotta, you post box up, out. Sit in the exit you know, row. Get the get, sit in the exit yeah, row. Look extra and brown mark, and mark right. some seats yeah. off. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I do that. I go take I your shirt want, off. I knew this is right. a bad idea. <laughs> I go in there. I sit in the exit row and I like lay my jacket out on the other two seats. And of course, the guy right behind me is like, "What are you doing?" Oh uh, yeah, uh, one of those I'm guys. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm holding these seats. You can't do that. Yes. But this in the other No, no, you can't do this. And he goes to the flight attendant and Tattle tells, tell. tells on me. Southwest tells fucking on assholes. <laughs> Southwest is what I I, oh, yeah. I can't do the you know people go Steve, you know, you it's it's fun, it's great and you you get your mind. I go no no no. I I'm bougie. I got to have the first class. Yeah. Ooh. I got to have it. I'm up there with my little meal. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. doing the, he's, he's got, the cookies are coming out. You know, yeah. the towel. I, I gotta. The you know. towel. But, but I, tell, towel. I mean, as much as I travel, I want to be comfortable. It's you're I right. Mean, you're there. It's, you're there a lot. You're right. Steve. I'm there every fucking weekend, Good. man. All you right, know? one more. All right. So there's this uh, story out of uh, Northern Mississippi. It happened a little bit ago, but it's um, the mom is still mad. So uh, there's this ten year old boy, uh, a black boy, who was arrested and placed in a cell for peeing in a parking lot. Oh, yeah, I heard about this one. Yeah. So what happened was, um, so the mom had an appointment at, at a business with her son. Uh, the son was waiting outside. And uh, the saw, well, they saw a sign saying there's no public restroom. So he decides to uh, pee uh, um, on private property near their car. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. And then an officer who's driving by spots the kid and, um, and first says, like, hey, you can't do that. Uh, the mom comes out. She admonishes her son. And the officer's like, all right, that's good enough. Right. Um, they thought the ordeal was over. Then four other officers, including a, a lieutenant, arrived after that. And then the son was arrested, put in a police vehicle, and taken to a police station. You know what we got to do with cops now is, like, when the NFL rookies come to camp, they always have that guy who has to explain to them, like, hey, no dick pics and right. use a condom and don't knock up Common any. Common sense shit. When you're on the road yeah. and there's a gal waiting in the lobby of the hotel, she's probably a gold Let's think digger. about our tweets. Yeah, let's think about our tweets. Like, there needs to, every there needs every police force needs uh, officer optics. And he needs to just go, look, man, uh, first off, yeah. arresting nine-year-old black dudes for taking a piss. Not a good look, guys. Not, it's not a good look. Yeah. And they right. could like raise their hand and go, yeah, but it violates code, Eesh. penal code. Too. Yeah, right. I no understood. Uh, that's what I call me. Officer Let's, Optics. Yeah. I'm wearing the frames that the guy was interviewed by Trevor Noah is yeah. wearing. Just listen to me. I know you want to arrest people. I know it's illegal to take a piss. But let's use some judgment. But let's yeah. use some judgment. Yeah. Well, what want... happened was he saw his dick and was like, this m- at 10? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that kid. He rolled over it like a spike strip. <laughs> yeah. Got two flat tires. Had to pull over. It was when the guy uncoiled his cock. The nine-year-old black guy's cock just was uncoiled. He hit him like a spike strip. One tear pulled, from the white cop. Just pulled, <laughs> Fuck that guy, man. Yeah, pulled to the side of the road. <laughs> Yeah, this, is a, this is a road hazard. <laughs> That's right. You put that big black dick away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a happy note to go out on. Steve Trevino, he oh. has got a podcast. He's got live Jeez. shows. He's going to be. Get some specials on he's YouTube. He's got specials on YouTube. Amazon Prime. You know, go no to big deal. SteveTrevino.com for all the live shows. And go to AdamCarolla.com <sighs> for all my live shows coming up in Irvine. Brad Williams going to hang out on that one October 11th. And we'll do a bunch of Cobbs, San Francisco, October 13th, 14th. So do that. And until next time, Sam Corolla for Steve Trevino and Chris Max Pat is saying, Mahalo.